Sir Desmond Swain. Why will you be able to buy a pint in a sports venue without getting anything to eat? But if you order a pint in a pub, you'll have to have a substantial meal. I'll leave that hanging as the great existential question of the day. Madam Deputy Speaker, suppression in anticipation of vaccination is the reason for these measures before us today. But people have been writing to me for months, terrified that a vaccine will be compulsory. And I've responded by saying, don't be so absolutely ridiculous. It could never possibly happen. We're a conservative government, after all. And now we discover, now we discover that a vaccination may be a passport to the acquisition of your civil liberty, liberties, yeah, yeah. and without which you will have all sorts of things that you would be able to do denied to you. Can I say that that would be absolutely disproportionate to a, a virus with a mortality rate of verging on 1%. It would equally be a terrible precedent to set for other vaccines and medicines. Uh, so I hope that we can get away from that. The way to persuade people to have a vaccine is, of course, to line up the entire government and its ministers and their loved ones and let them take it first and then get all the lovies, the icons of popular culture, out on the airwaves singing its praises. To have any kind of suggestion of coercion absolutely feeds the conspiracy theory that we are being cowed and our liberties being taken away. Very I'm busy. extremely grateful to him for giving way. It's, will he agree with me that it's not enough for the government merely to refrain from coercing people? The government's also got to pay attention to implicit coercion. That is, if the government turns a blind eye to allowing businesses like airlines and restaurants to refuse to let people in unless they've had the vaccination, the government's got to decide whether it's willing to allow people to discriminate on that basis. Discrimination. It would be vaccinationism, which we must, of course, resist. The other thing that any kind of coercion would do would be to set the seal on this government's reputation as the most authoritarian since the Commonwealth of the 1650s. But it is as nothing to the enthusiasm that we've seen from the front bench opposite for even more coercive and restrictive measures.